But if you had to choose a replacement, I'd make a brilliant breakfast show host, wouldn't I? Yeah, 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 but as, as I've been saying, I'm not leaving Radio 1, I'm staying, so it's... Uh, yeah. It's all me. Sure, sure. Hypothetically, <laughs> I'd be first choice with my Chris. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not going, you understand that, don't you? I'm not actually leaving the show, I'm staying at Radio 1. Do you think Comedy Dave would put a word in for me? Oh! <laughs> I've, uh, I've been watching the show. <laughs> yeah. Not tonight, but like every week. Have you? Yeah. Don't sound so surprised, love. It's good. <laughs> really? Well, it's in bits. But, um... <laughs> and I was, I'm, I'm very impressed with the band. And I know there's a couple of Leeds United fans in that band, so I'm... I'm... Come on, Leeds. Whoa! Bob, are you Leeds? Massively. Massively? No bullshit. No bullshit! Well, <laughs> and hardly the right phrase to use when you're talking about Leeds United, but <laughs> I, kind of, yeah, I appreciate it anyway. How big a football fan are you, Chris? Uh, uh, well, I never was. When I was a kid, I didn't give a shit. And then uh, <laughs> I moved to London, and every cab I got in, the cab driver would go, Where are you from, mate? I got Leeds. Oh, Leeds, I remember, 1974, blah, blah, blah. And I, I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. But it used to make me feel really homesick. So when I, when I started going home, I started to go to more games. And, um, and I, I really, really, really got into it. How old were you when you moved to London? I uh, was, I'm 24 now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was about 13 years ago. So yeah, I was 22. And did you come here to do a specific job, or did you just come because you thought you'd come to London? And I, no, and I got a, I got a job. Yeah, I wasn't like you know I'm not like Dick Whittington. I got um, <laughs> I came uh, I, I got a job at Capital Radio, at Capital FM, which like for all DJs was kind of like that was the place to get a gig. And I got a job there, and I just thought I can't believe it. I've, I've made it. I've made it to London. And then a year later, I was on Radio One. So it's like then I didn't really know what to do. Because that was like, I never thought I'd get there. But, you know, and here I am. The best thing that ever happened to the bloody thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me, they'll chop that out if I say <laughs> won't they? No, they won't. <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm so high on drugs, it's unbelievable. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Yeah. If you're still on air... Yes. ...in September... Yes. You will hold the record for the longest serving Radio 1 breakfast show host. Is that I know. Right? Can you believe that? Because pretty much there are people who can't believe that I work for the BBC as it is, and every day I lose my job. But we will be the longest serving breakfast show in Radio 1's history uh, come September. It's un-be-fucking-leavable. <laughs> no, I know. I tell you what, that was so nice. If I get fired before September, I'll look a dickhead. <laughs> now, I have to ask, what's happening with that? I saw the front page of The Sun the weekend. Yeah. What's that story all about? Is there any truth in it? Do you know where it comes from? I don't know where it's come from. I'd love to find out. But, um... Oh, cheers, thanks. What, there it is. <laughs> Why do that? Why do I put it on the thing? Don't, I know what it said. I read it. It was front page of The Sun. I know. Um... No, it was, um, it was, I tell you what, it was, it was rubbish, so, but y you can't help but think, so you kind of ring your boss and go, Hiya. <laughs> you see the papers? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, what a load of rubbish. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's a load of rubbish, love. She's like that, good, you know. She can go shopping. Um, <laughs> but what's interesting is, is I've never had uh, anything like that. I've, kind of been, I've been in the paper before, but that's really weird. And um, uh, I, I stayed in my house for the whole day because there was paparazzi and stuff outside. What's the, what was that like for it's you? It's just, it's honestly yeah. really weird because um, I've, I've blown it now, but I don't care because it is a funny story. I moved recently, lived in the same flat for years, and I moved and I bought a house. And um, I got a phone call from my old next door neighbours going, there's loads of paparazzi outside the flat. So they obviously didn't know I'd moved. So I had some outside the old place and I had loads outside the new place. So I thought, well, 
I've got nothing to hide, um, and I'll just say, look, I haven't lost my job, everything's fine, the story's loaded, rubbish, fine. But I didn't want them to know where I lived, because they obviously weren't 100% sure. They sent one to one place, one to the other. So I hid in my house. But the only thing is, all the curtains and stuff were open, and I needed to get stuff from certain rooms. So I crawled around on my hands and knees. <laughs> It's the weirdest thing. I kind of go out and cause, uh, I go and make a cup of tea, and then I go, oh, I need, I need my, my phone charger is in the, is oh, fine. So I, I was literally, can I show you? Yeah, please. Right. Okay. So this is the this is the door of the bedroom. Yeah. Right. And the other window, <laughs> and my phone charger is in the corner, and the window's quite low. I'm just going to make sure that the. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be showing the crack. So I'm kind of crawling <laughs> like that. And I get my charger, but you have to look to see if they're looking. <laughs> Wh which camera's on? If you just turned over... <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't what it seems, it's really... <laughs> and if, if Faye Ripley's watching in the green room, ready to come out later, this won't be happening to you either. <laughs> so, um, so I had a, I'm, I'm having a little look like that, and I can, I can see them across the road, and they're talking about me, going, oh, she, we, we, and I'm like, oh, they're still there. So I, and I'd crawl back, backwards, <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, I'm the most successful radio and breakfast show host <laughs> in its history, and I'm on my hands and knees in my own home. Um, but luckily for me, right, it was the day of the, the, the football, and so I was kind of banking on them going and a minute to five before the game started they all disappeared which was brilliant so two minutes past five hours out went for a few beers brilliant you climbed a mountain oh yeah i did i climbed kilimanjaro <laughs> no, I don't. no yeah no i know but i'm just going on about it a I don't. Mountain. yeah whose idea was it it's gary barlow's stupid bloody idea <laughs> And I only did it to get free Take That tickets for the sold-out tour. <laughs> I never thought I'd actually have to properly climb a st stupid, stupid, stupid mountain. Now, was Gary a friend of yours beforehand? We, we knew each other, and, um, and he'd been on the show a few times, and we'd met, and, um, but we, we weren't, like, clo not like you and me. Um, but, but now I'm better friends with him. Um, <laughs> So, no, he emails me out the blue going, hey, I've got a favour, because yeah, you know he does that when he talks, can he? <laughs> I've got a favour to ask you. What is it, unglue your eyes? And, you know, <laughs> and he says, uh, how do you fancy climbing Mount Kilimanjaro? And I went, I, I don't even know what Mount Kilimanjaro is. He goes, it's the highest freestanding mountain. And I said, it's got the word mountain in, it's got to be a no. And he went, ah, oh, I think you should do it. Uh, have you been drinking? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yes, it was all his idea, and I said, why don't we do it for comic relief? And he goes, great idea. And the next thing is, um, I'm in a tent, having soup with a couple of girls aloud and Ronan Keaton, and it was, like, it was like having a weird dream. So you suggested doing it for comic relief, that was your idea? <coughs> Barlow yeah. just wanted to do it for fun. No, no, he wanted to do it for charity. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't doing it. He was, yeah, he was raising money for a new villa. He, 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 <laughs> times are hard. They've only sold a billion records this year. So, so he said, let's do it for charity. And I went, why don't we do it for Comic Relief? So, um, so we did. And uh, it was amazing, but I'm, I've talked about it way too much. No, you haven't. I really, I don't want to bore anybody with it. What, I'm it? a little bit embarrassed of it now. Why are you embarrassed about it? Just because it keeps just coming up all the time. And you know what it's like? It's like people just go... Oh, God, he's going on about that mountain again. <laughs> but, um, you know, all right, you know, yeah, I climbed one of the biggest mountains in the world and raised over three and a half million pounds for uh, sick kiddies and stuff. So what? You know, I mean... But, um... The only, thing, the only thing I would say is if Gary Barlow rings you one day out of the blue and goes, Justin, fancy climbing? Say, fuck off and put the phone down. <laughs> Can you send the phone straight away? Don't, don't do it. You know what I find quite telling? What? It was his idea to climb the mountain. Yeah. He's the only member of Take That to climb it. So yeah, yeah. He must have said to the others, hey, do you fancy doing this? And he went, fuck that. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't think Mark can get up there with his little legs. Can he? Can he? Can he? I know. It'd be quite cute, though, wouldn't it? Watching them all do it. It's an incredible thing to do. <laughs> Why don't we talk about the quiz night? It's shit. You are enjoying it. I'm loving it. Yeah, and you look like you are, and that's the great thing. 
I met the big, big boss of Channel 4 the other night. I went to the BAFTAs like yourself, yes. right? And I'd never been to the BAFTAs before. It's very weird. And I met the big boss of Channel 4 and he goes, how's it going with the show? And I said, yeah, it's going great. And everything. And he goes, yeah, yeah, and I've seen it. It's very good. And I just, I said, is it really bad of me to say? I think the show is brilliant. And he went, no, you can say that. And I went, good, can we have another series then, please? Because I thought you may as well strike while the iron's hot. And what did he say? He, he went to the toilet. <laughs> and never came back. <laughs> and when I went in, 20 minutes later, <laughs> there was a window open to where I <laughs> And what looked like the remains of his jacket hanging on a rusty nail. <laughs> OK, I made the whole of that last bit up. Just for a second, buddy.